<laughs> it's like happy holidays for your eyes. Instead of using my teleprompter for keeping my notes, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these on now and I can wear these. It's like a face prompter. The folks at Rokit are sponsoring this video to chat about more face computing. I'm a big fan. I'm a huge nerd for portable displays in general. Adding a screen is one of the best ways you can get more use out of the gadgets that you already own. We're talking phones, tablets, consoles, especially portable consoles, laptops, cameras. You probably own gear that would benefit from a second screen or plugging it into a TV and talking to folks who travel a lot. Wouldn't it be cool if that big portable display could fit in a sunglasses case. The folks at Rokid have been making augmented and mixed reality solutions for a while now. They started out in 2014 with some industrial and corporate solutions, and now we're playing with these. This is the Rokid Air headset. Glasses with a pair of 1080p micro OLED displays on special lenses that can simulate the field of view. The company describes it like you're sitting in front of a 120 inch screen, like you're sort of in the first third of a movie theater. I think those descriptions can be kind of difficult to grok because it's not just screen size, it's also distance. So compared to the old busted TV that I keep over on that bookshelf, the effect is kind of like sitting eight feet away from about a 70 inch screen, which is a really nice upgrade over my old busted TV. Getting to the Rokid Air themselves, these are the lightest glasses in this tier that I've been able to test drive, and which that helps put a little less pressure right on the front of your face, especially right on the bridge of your nose. The arms are nice and flexy if you have a big noggin like I do. The screens get image and power plugged in over a USB cable. Right now I'm driving these from a Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Not even doing anything fancy, it's just literally Microsoft Word on my Sony Xperia plugged directly into my eyeballs. Signal and power come in on a USB cable which is docked over your left ear, and on the right ear there's a power switch which can also toggle the brightness of the micro OLEDs. And the whole design can kind of pull double duty as a pair of sunglasses. You could wear these out and about if you really needed to. Obviously, not your main pair of sunglasses, but it's handy for just a brief interaction. For my own use case, especially as we're starting to travel just a little bit more, I like to use the example of airplane travel. I don't have to completely disengage everything, I just pop off a cable and I can walk off the airplane with some interesting looking sunglasses on my face. I've played with a number of these different solutions. The unique perk for the Rokid, we get individual diopters per eye, so you can fine tune the focus, which should be a big benefit for nearsighted folks. And of course, respectable speakers are located in each arm, right above and in front of your ears. They're just loud enough. If you're playing some audio and someone's standing right next to you, they're gonna be heard. But like a lot of these other audio sunglass solutions that we've seen, decently discreet, as long as you're not maxing out the volume right next to someone's head. Getting into the operation, as I'm actually using them right now, we've got two separate modes. The straightforward side, you plug these in and they show up as a 16 by 9 1080p display. This is the simplest interaction when you use them with something like a laptop. Your laptop will recognize them as a second display and you can extend your desktop, you can screen mirror, or you can switch exclusively to the glasses if you're looking for a little privacy. Ditto something like my Steam Deck plugged directly into the USB-C port here, the screen on the deck shuts off, and I get the display projected in space in front of me. Now, that other use requires an app to talk to the Rokid, but there is a rudimentary AR mode. Now, any Android phone that supports video output, and I'll slide, I think on this side, I'll slide a list of phones that I've used personally that actually did work with this app, but this obviously won't be a comprehensive total list of all supported phones. The Rokid app will see the glasses and using your phone as a pointer and a controller, you can navigate a floating interface. And there is simple head tracking built into the Rokid Air, so when elements of the UI are floating in space, they remember their position from your head where you put them out in space. I don't know what word we should use for this kind of augmented reality. The Rokid do not interact with actual physical landmarks in space around you. They're not a full industrial grade AR headset with a built-in computer. You've seen those demos where you can like stick something to an actual wall in your room and the headset can spatially track that location data around you. <laughs> the Rokid ain't that. You're not getting that level of sophistication for this low of a price. And I 
I know the immediate comparison, especially at this price point that people are going to make, but these aren't like a standalone computer VR headset competitor either. I get it. Someone might want to game on a portable VR headset, and this price is pretty close to some of those experiences. That's not what these are built to do either. You're not taking a VR headset and putting it in a shirt pocket. I think we techies should be able to rationally understand that shrinking an optical system makes the construction more complicated and a little more expensive. Instead of reviewing these for what they aren't, I think we should focus on what they are, and that plays into the actual use of the glasses. Just from an ergonomic standpoint, mini screens still generate some heat. I've got a white screen going on. This is OLED at its maximum, and I can feel, you know, just the bridge right here is starting to get just a little warm. You'll definitely feel it over extended use, but there's no battery in the glasses, no GPUs, no radios in the glasses. Those other things, that would run a lot hotter if the whole experience were a self-contained computing solution. You'd need more surface area just to vent that heat and keep the experience comfortable. Just, just hold that thought for a second. I've got them over here on the bookshelf. Do we need to revisit how uncomfortable and sweaty it was using a phone smushed up against your face with Google Daydream? <laughs> that ain't it, Chief. That's the big hook for me personally. I like some of this fun AR interface stuff when I'm using it with a phone, but I really like having more screen real estate in such a small package. I've talked about desktop modes on our phones for years now. The Honor Magic desktop, Huawei, Moto Ready 4, Samsung DeX, and even the simplified video out mode on a number of premium Android phones. I mean, this stuff is so cool. We can pair it with like a little travel keyboard and a little mouse. Let me put the whole thing together for you. Keyboard, mouse, phone, display. I mean, this could be your entire pack and carry solution right here. This is already a fun premium add-on, but that's also where other good accessories come into play. Rokid sent over their optional cover glasses so you can get darker or lighter visors. I mean, if you're often using them in an area with bright light, this blocks more light to improve that image quality. I've heard some of those complaints from people like you take these glasses out into really bright locations and the light is competing with the image in the display. But when was the last time you just hauled a 70 inch TV out into the middle of a park. How does the TV compete against direct sunlight? I find it a lot easier to aim my head somewhere where there's less competition for the light and you can buy an optional darker visor. That works too. But even more importantly, Rokit is going to be shipping this hub as a separate accessory addressing one of my biggest gripes with numerous other wearable displays. You plug your glasses into your phone, cool. But now, how do I charge this phone if the battery starts running low? Especially if I'm using the phone to control the AR interface. See how it's moving around? If the phone's staying put, yeah, you could probably pair this up with a wireless charging solution, but it's way too cumbersome if you're moving the phone around. Well, this little hub aims to address that issue. Now we can properly power the glasses from the phone and there's an additional USB-C port to charge the host device. It's simple. It works great on phones. It's built to also support the Nintendo Switch in docked mode. At present, it does not support the Steam Deck. And I have reached out to Rokid about that support and maybe that's something they can address in the future. Right now, this is a great mobility add-on if you're planning on using using it with a phone or a switch, and hopefully we can extend some of that support later. Because ultimately, that's the big fun hook, giving yourself a large private screen. I've been loving the Steam Deck since it finally shipped here. And this, this combination is such a unique way to interact with some great gaming hardware. We kind of take this stuff for granted. We're so used to gaming posture. You have to look down at your hands because that's where the game is and that's where you're resting the arms. Or, or you can plug your Steam Deck into a TV and that's where the game lives. Your body has to conform to the device. Now, this is something so small, but it's a distinctly different way to game. It's not like VR, it's not immersive like that, but you can comfortably sit or lay down or just stretch out or angle or lean. The game is in your field of view, no matter how or where you sit. It might be kind of overkill in a home that has a couple TVs floating around, but this is amazing for traveling, especially on an airplane, because you're already cramped up. It's an uncomfortable seat. I'm, I'm super average in size and build, and these seats don't even really adequately support me. But now I can set myself up, get myself as comfortable as I can be, and then the display 
follows me. I don't have to then kind of like shrug my shoulders up or throw my arms onto armrests or find some other angle to prop this up. The display is right where I need it to be to be the most comfortable. I sound like such an infomercial. No more cramped and hunched over. Has this ever happened to you? Lean back, chin up, and you have your own private movie theater. I really feel that this is an exciting emerging accessory category. I want to say it was about 11 years ago. I was playing with bulky, heavy cinema headsets with 720p resolution, multiple cables sticking out the back, and prices around $900 in 2011 money, which would be about $1,100 today, give or take. Just a couple years ago, playing with some lighter weight glasses, we moved up to 1080p in a more manageable shell, but they were still a little clunky, they were still a little big, and even then, they were costing around $700. Getting to the end of 2022, we've got Roket Air coming in well under $400. And in this price range, I feel a lot better pointing a broader range of consumers to maybe give these glasses a try. Let's not beat around the bush. This is still, this is a premium companion accessory. It's still the bleeding edge, tip of the spear of consumer tech, but I think it's a lot more practical than it used to be. What if you could put a whole TV in your pocket. I think a few folks might be interested in giving that a test drive. So I wanna thank Rokid for sending these my way, collaborating on this video, portable, and wearable, wearable displays used to be crazy exotic accessories that a lot of consumers would just overlook. You'd, it would require an expensive computer to really make use of something like this. I mean, I'm holding up a current, I mean, this is a pretty expensive phone, but you can go back a decent ways. If you've already invested in a nicer phone, a Nintendo Switch, uh, a Steam Deck, or you just want something to pair with a small travel, a lightweight laptop, you probably already own gadgets that will power the this fantastically well. So I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on the Rokid Air, and then also some of their accessory packages. They sell this in a couple of different combos, things like the different visor, some display adapters, their adorable little USB hub. All of those things will be linked down in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. If you are clicking on links, if you're visiting my home site, somegadgetguide.com, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. That list is the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams. And I'm now newly on The Mastodon, so definitely catch that link. Join me on The Mastodon, and I will catch you all on the next video.